it's Doug, CCM Cafe, and we are joined by Francesca Battistelli. Thanks for having me. This is so awesome. we've got a lot of stuff to talk about. Maybe we get right first to the film. Yes, let's do it. God's Not Dead has another uh, franchise film coming out, God's Not Dead 4, and you're in it. Yes, yes. You play the character of Rebecca. I do. So what is Rebecca's story? So Rebecca is a homeschooling mom of two. And she runs a homeschool co-op with David White, who's the, you know, in all the films, you'll recognize him as the pastor. And, you know, she is just this fierce mom who loves her kids and loves the Lord and um, is teaching them. And then she gets, they, the co-op sort of gets um, challenged by the state and they want to shut them down. And so the film kind of revolves around how they respond to that. And it's a... It's a really, it's a really great film. She's a strong character, and I resonated a lot with with her, and you know, with the whole story of the film. So. Well, and sadly, it's not like some kind of fairy tale. I mean, religious freedoms and things are under attack. Absolutely, and other countries, especially in Europe, are seeing homeschool bans, and um, more and more, it's kind of the conversation is coming, you know, this way. And so, it, it is something that I think we we need to think about. So I saw, I think it was on Instagram, you had a little photo there of your trailer with the name and all that on it. Yeah. What was the whole experience like for you being the actress? Man, it was so fun. I've done a lot of theater growing up and had a tiny little role in uh, Woodlawn, it's a friend's film, and, um, but never have like <laughs> been on set for 12 hours a day, day after day. And you know, I'm walking into this experience kind of knowing the ropes of what I do you know, in music 14 years, I kind of know how to do the thing, but I knew nothing. And I'm like, what does this mean? And I don't know the lingo and I don't know <laughs> what I'm supposed to do. And so everyone was so kind and helpful. Um, but it was a really neat challenge because I didn't know how I, you know, if I would be okay. Uh -huh, <laughs> and uh -huh. and um, just getting to work with some really great people who I think were very kind. And it was fun. And I was like, okay, I can do this again. This is neat. <laughs> so were there some nerves? Was it kind of like, oh, yeah. yeah. For sure, and it's just a whole different experience. I mean, you're kind of learning a scene, and then you're filming it, and then you're learning the next one, and you're filming. I'm used to like get the concert ready, rehearse for weeks, and then go do the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And this was mm -hmm. like, well, I may have memorized these lines, but am I going to memorize the next ones? Like <laughs> every time, I'm like, well, there's no way I'll do it again. And <laughs> so that was that was different. But it's again, it's good to stretch yourself. You yeah. Know. So any funny stories or or things, outtakes or something that were kind of like, you know. That's a good question. I'm sure that I had lots of moments where they're like, okay, now let's try that again. <laughs> um, but the whole experience was was cool. We got to go to Oklahoma for a month and take all the kids and basically lived there and homeschooled, ironically. Um, and the weather was terrible. We left like right before that huge blizzard that hit Texas and Oklahoma oh, like, wow. the day before. And so, you know, just occupying the kids on my days off, like, okay, now we're gonna go to this indoor playground for the 20th time because <laughs> it's snowing. Um, but they did so good. And I think it was a good adventure for them too. Very cool, very yeah. cool. So I guess transitioning a little bit into the personal world. So your character, only has two kids. <laughs> yes, yes. You, you are currently pregnant with child number six. Number six, that's right, yes. So I was trying to do the math here. So you celebrated 12 years, Yes. potentially six kids. Yep. So are we slated for 12 kids when you're 24, <laughs> 24 years? 24 years, <laughs> sounds about right. It's like every two years. <laughs> is, is there a particular goal? Is that the right word? It's <laughs> a great question. We're asked it a lot. Um, not really. We've kind of always, this wasn't like predicted or planned or we're going to have, you know, a whole gaggle of children. It's just something we've always really trusted the Lord about and been really open-handed about it. And so we're still that way, you know, we're still just, we'll see what's next. As so, the Lord leads. As he leads, yep. So are you one that peeks at the gender when you can or do you like to be surprised or? Oh, I want to know. We, uh... <laughs> We were surprised with our first. We had friends who did that, and we thought that was super cool. And so we did that one time. And then now <laughs> we don't do that anymore. That was enough. I mean, it was really neat to be like, it's a boy, you know. Right. But um, now you're struggling who's going to share rooms. And there's so many more logistics that it's good to know ahead of time. So we're still a couple weeks away from that. So is it easier wait. the more that you have? Because then they supposedly play with each other, right? That's what I've heard. It is so true. Yeah. Like, I think having... When I just had two, that was the hardest. That was the hardest for me. Two little ones, because I have those same ages right now. Actually, I actually have three, and 
and it's not nearly as hard because I've got the older two to help and to ac occupy them and change diapers. That's great. Yeah. I highly recommend <laughs> having older children. It's built in babysitters. <laughs> kind of work the farm. Like That's it was right. the old school That's thing, right? right? We need Literally. higher hands. Yes. <laughs> well, I know it's a story that you've shared before, and I was just, you know, going over some some things as far as baby number five yeah. and, and the challenges that came with that. And mm -hmm. I thought, wow, I haven't heard that story from you specifically. So I thought if you could share a little bit of that, because the, yeah. the encouragement and, 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 and the God hand on all of that was just so powerful. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I was uh, pretty early on in my pregnancy with baby number five. And my husband was out of town, I was driving back that morning, thankfully, and I woke up just in excruciating pain. And I, I have my babies at home, so I have a pretty high to pain tolerance. So I'm like, this, something's wrong. You know, something was wrong. And I um, called my midwife and at first she was like, okay, well, keep an eye on this and try these things and do that. And it was on my right side. So everyone was a little concerned. Was it like a, what is it, appendix mm -hmm. or something like that? So I eventually called my parents and they, and my midwife again said, let's, I think you need to go to the emergency room because your ultrasound had shown that you had a cyst, which is like a mass um, on your right ovary, and it could be related to that. So I had just had the ultrasound. We hadn't even gone over it yet. I didn't even really know that that was mm -hmm. there. Um, anyway, so we drive to the hospital. I hope you wanted all this. Yeah, I'm telling yeah, you all. this is good. <laughs> okay. My parents are driving to the hospital. My husband's like furiously driving home from Atlanta, and... Um, I'm in so much pain, had like a bucket in case I needed to, you know, throw mm -hmm. up. So mm -hmm. much pain. And we get, like we pull into the emer emergency room parking lot and I, it goes away. Like I'm like, what's happening? I feel better. This is weird. Like I'm glad we're here. I'm, I'm glad it's over or it stopped for a second. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't know what was going on. So they took me in for an ultrasound and figured out that that ovary had basically twisted. It's called a torsion and it's very painful but it can twist back. And so they think what happened is that it twisted in my sleep and then went back. But it's dangerous because it can cause a bunch of issues and you can, you know, rupture and mm -hmm. hurt the ovary. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to remove it right then. And I was like, my husband's not, like I need to talk to my husband and my midwife. And I said, is this the type of thing that I can wait on? And she said, yes, um, but not long, you know, like you need to get this figured out. So I'm trying to speed up. So I went and saw another doctor who was very torn, a sweet old old man who's retired now, and he was like, I don't see a good option either way. He said, unless God does a miracle, which he kind of said jokingly, he said, this isn't going away. You're either going to have to get it out now, or in it, hopefully it doesn't do that thing again in, when you're 34 weeks or something in, in an emergent situation or after the baby's born. But mm. one way or the other, you're going to have surgery. And so I was pretty upset and my husband had so much faith I mean from the beginning he was like I just God's gonna God's gonna take care of it like you don't even worry about it so I'd bring it up like you know days after that like well, what are we gonna do and he's like we're gonna pray like don't even worry about it and I'm like okay but like what are we gonna do Matt <laughs> <laughs> and uh, eventually we decided with you know counsel that we were going to wait until my 20 week ultrasound so I was like 12 weeks at the time and um so two months of just waiting and nothing happened. And we thought, you know, okay, there's no more pain. Like maybe it'll be okay. And we get to the ultrasound where you find out the gender and all that. And um, the lady said, okay, no, we're going to look at this cyst today. And it was like this big. I mean, it was a very large cyst. So we're going to look at the baby, but we're also going to look at the cyst. And uh, my husband out of the blue goes, well, you're not going to find it because God healed her. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I mean, yeah, yeah I believe you. But what if he did it? You know, I'm like, I'm still doubting and he has so much faith. And so this lady is looking around and literally she's like, I mean, I can't find anything like it. It's wow. gone. And I think it was so cool that he even I mean, my midwife starts crying and we're all like, praise Jesus in the middle of this <laughs> ultrasound office. And this gal was pregnant for the first time. And it was just like, how is this ministering to her? Like, you just never know. And um, I was able to share it at our church and on Instagram and I just I just posted it because I'm like this is God did a miracle like this is so cool but then I kind of forgot and went about my day mm. and people have brought it up you know it's been two years now and ha have continued to like remind me of God's goodness because it's so easy just like the Israelites were like we see a miracle and then we have another challenge and it's like what am I going to do I don't know you know <laughs> it's like well don't you remember and so it's a good 
really good reminder of just his faithfulness and he cares about the details and he's got us and even if the outcome doesn't look like how we want it to he's still got us and that's you know he's still good just yeah. like let me bring it back to the song god is good no matter what but it's really true you yeah. know so there you go no that's perfect because <laughs> i think every time as that story continues to be shared just like they shared the stories of the old testament yeah it's that constant reminder because there's totally. another mom that could be freaking out over something right now totally. yeah. and is finding some hope and some encouragement yes and just building your faith you know to say god can still do these things and 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 he wants to be in those details and be part of our journey and care about those things that maybe seem so personal or just, you know, well, surely he's not going to do something about this, but he does. And that's awesome. Well, that's very cool. One more question, I guess, as we keep looking over her husband's right over there off, <laughs> off camera. So they talk about opposites attract or that you complement each other with different things. So yes. is that kind of like he, he's the steady rock and... <laughs> what are you trying to say, Doug? No, no, I'm just saying <laughs> because... Oh, no, because <laughs> no, the faith thing, well, it's interesting because t I feel like I'm the one who comes from more of that background of like, God's going to do a miracle and let's believe it. But when it came to for me, I was like, but maybe, maybe not for me. And he had so much faith and it was so amazing. But yes, he is way more um, steady. He's a middle child. I'm an only child who's kind of <laughs> crazy <laughs> at times. And, uh, and he, <laughs> he makes sure that my craziness goes stays checked. So it's a good balance. It's a good, it's a good balance. balance, yes. He's a good leader. I'm very thankful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man.